I always say that storytelling has three elements. It has the story, which exists all by itself. It's the audience, which is there, and the teller. The goal is for the teller to get the story to the audience without getting in the way. And to see the eyes of the audience that they understand and they want to know what happens next. That is there's nothing like that for me. Performing in live theater, it's always changing, and you can constantly explore the experience of the character from night to night. And sometimes it's extremely difficult and tedious to do that, but it's also really exciting to know that every night you've got another chance at doing it and hopefully continuing to explore um, on a nightly basis, which I find really fun. I'm Charles Numerick. I'm an actor and a storyteller. I'm Seth Numerick, I'm his son, and I'm also an actor. I started a small nonprofit theater company in 1981, Creative Theater Unlimited, and uh, ran it until uh, 2008. Since about 2004, I've been working with lots of different theater companies around the Twin Cities while I was also finishing up projects with my own theater company. Growing up, I performed all over the Twin Cities at Youth Performance Company, the Children's Theater, the Guthrie, Park Square, History Theater, the Ordway, lots of different places just uh, doing plays. And um, that was when I left the Twin Cities then when I was 16 to move to New York to, to go to school and pursue it as a career. When Seth auditioned for the Juilliard School, it was a month after his 16th birthday. So when he was accepted, yeah, he's the youngest person to be accepted and to graduate from the drama program at the Juilliard School. Right after I graduated, I was cast in a play off-Broadway. It was an amazing experience for me to get out into the world and, and to try to put these, these tools to use in a professional setting. And shortly after, I went out of town to do a play in Los Angeles at the Amundsen History Boys, and then went to Seattle to do a play at the Seattle Rep and then I went to Scotland to do a play. And so I spent about a year um, right after that, uh, just out of town working and doing different things, which was really great for me. The Merchant of Venice, it was produced by the Public Theater, and yeah, it was my, my first Broadway experience, and to suddenly be in that environment with some really incredible actors, and Al Pacino was kind of our leader and I was constantly amazed at his ability to to find new things night after night and just throw himself into different choices and different experiences and everyone around him then we all had to stay on our toes and stay alive to to be able to play off of it and it made for really exciting performances. Moving from, from Merchant, I went into rehearsals for War Horse, and I like to say I'm the, I'm the main human in the play, although there are some horses in the play uh, that are portrayed by these life-size puppets operated by three people. And Joey, the horse, is really the star of the play, but I'm, uh, I'm sort of his counterpart as the human lead in the play. And so it, it, it was a big role, and I, I felt very fortunate that they, that they decided that I was capable <laughs> of um, of making a go of it. So the play is set in England, and specifically in, in southwest England, in a, a, a county called Devon. And uh, the Devon accent is very different than what uh, you might think of as a typical English accent. And working on dialects and, and vocal techniques is something that I really, really enjoy personally. Now when we go, we walk, right? Slow pace, one foot after the other, slow. That's a little sense of, of the accent. It's sort of round and grounded.
when I watch him on Broadway, the beauty of being able to realize halfway through the show, oh right, oh, that's my son. Because it's not anymore. He has taken that role and he has owned it. One of the things about being an artist in any, in any context, um, and that I think I tried to instill in both of our sons. Are, yeah, be careful, you know, don't, don't necessarily take this as something that is a given because it's tough, it is, a, it is a tough existence. I've been really lucky in the opportunities that I've been able to, to experience and um, yeah, I, I sort of feel like I am living in a dream sometimes when I go to work at Lincoln Center and realize how, how fortunate I am just to be working, let alone uh, in those in that environment and this kind of play that I'm doing right now. It's really, it's really great and I feel very fortunate. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.